See if it's true first. Now torches. Forward. Respect for the king's wife. <laughs> uh, and we'll drink it to your health, old fancy face. And to the downfall of His Majesty King Louis XI. Well, I'm glad you reminded me. No, 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 no. Why give yourself the trouble, Rene? Why? To help him forget what we look like. I don't think he'll remember us. Will you, Sir Richard? He's a little soft in the head, aren't you, Uncle? You see? Oh, he isn't any soft in the head than I am. Exactly. Uh, it's one thing to borrow a little of His Majesty's food and wine, but nothing like that. We'll hang for it, you fool. Then let us hang. The watch! Father. Now, what trouble are you in? Well, no, don't tell me. I'd better know nothing whatever about it. <laughs> ah, but you wound me, Father. You wound me deeply. I've just returned from the country. My first thought is naturally of my foster father. I fly to your domicile, and how am I received? Like a fly in the soap. In the first place, you haven't been in the country because you couldn't get through the Burgundian lines without wings. And if there's one man in France who has not got wings, it is you, Francois. And in the second place, I hear that you were drunk every night last week in the Furcone Tavern with a wench who rejoices in the name of Fat Margot. Oh, that's not true, Father. I choose to believe it. Have you ever shown me anything but ingratitude? Brought me anything but misery since I took you in at the age of six? Ah, that is true, Father. At seven, you were an expert in breaking windows. Is that the milk? Yes. At eight, you stole a chicken from the spit of Master Ledoux. A small, thin chicken. Don't cloud the issue. At 11, you stole a goat. Yes. The fat goat. <laughs> and at 14, at 14, you were carefully avoiding your classes at the university to spend your days fishing, gambling, and writing questionable verse. And yet I took a master's degree. You can't deny that. And for what? So that you could become the foulest example of laziness and loose living it's ever been. Open the king's name. 
What have you done? Nothing, nothing. I just came from the country. Open it, Tell them, tell them you were sleeping. You saw no one. I'll not tell a lie, Francois. That's all right, but you don't have to be chatty either. Oh, good morning, Father. I'm sorry to disturb you, but the King's storehouse has just been robbed. King's storehouse? Robbed? Yes. Ah, by the poor, no doubt. They're so hungry. And the sight of all those hams and chickens and you cheese... You seem to know here. a good deal about this, Father. I... I knew nothing at all about it until you told me. Nevertheless, one of the thieves was seen climbing your wall. Did you see him? Climbing over my wall? Uh, oh, no, no, I can truthfully say I did not. You see, I was here in the kitchen. You can't see the wall from the kitchen. Oh, search the house. Is this your breakfast? It was my breakfast. Upstairs, quick! See you again, Father. Well, now perhaps I may finish my breakfast in peace, eh, Father? Come with me. But, Father... But, Father, it'll soon be daylight, and I... I... Play. <laughs> Wait here, my lady. I'll dig them out in a way they'll remember. I was afraid you'd gone. Well, I've never seen you before in my life. Ah, but you've forgotten my dreams. I've dreamt of you always. 
Each night we've roamed the starry way together. Each morning I've waked with despair in my heart to realize no mortal could be so fair. Yet here you are, the loveliest lady this side of heaven. I find to my shame my dreams have done you less than justice. Oh, my lady, my lady, I eat and drink thinking only of you. Wherever I look, I see you only. Of course, if I had better manners, I'd keep this to myself. But you see, I have no manners. I do indeed. Ah, but we are as we are. For what purpose, no one knows. Perhaps, perhaps I was born to inhale the perfume of your hair and to exhale the music of the ages. Uh, may I, may I read you a poem? No. Oh, thank you, my lady. If I were king, ah, love, if I were king, what tributary nations would I bring to stoop before your scepter and to swear allegiance to your lips and eyes and hair? Beneath your feet, what treasures I would fling. The stars should be your pearls upon a string. The world a ruby. Lady. The world a ruby for your finger ring. And you should have the sun and moon to wear if I were king. Let these wild dreams Holy and wilder words Joe, take wings. Deep that in the woods I hear. <laughs> Milady. Milady. Won't you accept this poem? Shall we beat him, Milady? Yes. But not too hard, just lightly. There he is! Ah, I thought you'd got away, did you? Aren't you Francois Villon? Francois Villon, Captain. At your service. Ah. Is this the man you saw in the storehouse? I've never laid eyes on him before. Have I, fancy face? Are you sure? I have an eye like an eagle. Well, maybe. But I think we'll just take him along to make sure. One moment, Captain. There must be some mistake. I saw this gentleman at his prayers in church. Good day. Well, let the uh, gentleman go. But only for the time being. All right. Forward. <laughs> Goodbye, sir, <Sarah> Richards. Francois, admit, you feel better for it, don't you? I do, Father, I do. You see, my son, time spent in church is not wasted. Oh, indeed not, Father. She, she smiled at me. Smile? Good morning, Catherine. Good morning, Noah. Why didn't you attend me at Mass this morning? I was on duty all night. I'm just off to the East Gate now with reinforcements. Has there been fighting? Oh, no, the Burgundians won't attack. Why should they when they know they can soon starve us into submission? But are we to wait for that and, and do nothing? The longer we delay, the weaker our people get, while the Burgundians grow stronger each day. Why don't we attack them and get it over with? Have we no arms? Have we no men to fight for us? Well spoken, Lady Catherine. Spoken with all the impatience of youth with its life before it and the courage of a woman who doesn't have to fight. Oh, forgive me, Your Majesty. Such sir? words are dangerous, cousin. Suppose one of my generals, fired by your oratory, rushed out to meet the enemy. Hmm? We might all get our throats cut. Suppose we won the battle. <laughs> no, no, my generals never win battles. No more than my guards protect me against my own people. Uh, did you know we had 13 outbreaks last night? Even my private storehouse was robbed. Oh, Your Majesty. Yes. Yes, it's all very depressing. The robbing of my storehouse especially denotes a sad lack of patriotism. And a sad lack of food, Your Majesty? Hmm? Quite so. 
Yes. And now, my dear, I think you'd better run along to the Queen and help her with her uh, uh, embroidery or whatever it is she does with her spare time. And if you are bound for the East Gate, Master Noel, I suggest you get there before night overtakes you. Good morning. Lucini, what brings you here? I've just come from a meeting with a delegation of the citizens of Paris. Well, what do they want now? They realize the futility of further resistance to the Burgundians and have appealed to me as Grand Council of France to intercede with your majesty. Huh. Perhaps they would like me to abdicate and surrender the city? They feel by making terms with the enemy we would save further risk to life and property. Yes, the good citizens of Paris are much concerned with their lives and their property. They say such an act on your majesty's part would assure you're being sainted in history. Hmm? Oh, yes, but uh, my ambitions are a little more modest. Uh, tell the good committee we already have one St. Louis. Two might cause confusion. Good morning, my dear Dorsini. Good morning, sire. Tell me, Oliver, if you were one of our beloved rabble, that is, cold, hungry, with no good reason to love your king... What would you do, eh? Well, I, I, I... You'd desert to the enemy, wouldn't you? Never, sire. You think not? That is because you are not one of the rebel. You're under obligations to your king, who has rewarded you well for faithful services. But there are some who have not your high sense of loyalty, my dear Oliver. Look at this arrow now. It came over the walls last night from the Burgundian camp. See? A very clever device. It's a message. It's written in, uh, in gibberish. But the one for whom it was intended would understand it. Wouldn't it be interesting to know who that one is? Eh, Oliver? Yes. Yes. It uh, must be someone important. <laughs> the Burgundians wouldn't go to all this trouble to send a billy do to a serving wench. And it must be someone with power. Someone very close to me. Am I making you nervous, Oliver? Uh, no, sire. I know that your majesty trusts me. Yes. Yes, Oliver. I trust you across the room. And that's farther than I trust anyone else. Well? Your majesty, the prisoner is most obstinate. Huh. Has he been fully uh, uh, persuaded? Oh, yes, your majesty. But he still refuses to confess. Foolish fellow. Perhaps a little of my persuasive powers may cause him to change his mind. Give me that arrow. Come on, both of you. Nasty smell down here as if the cook had bent the roast. Come now. Tell me, my man, for whom was this intended? Come, 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 come. Why bring all this suffering on yourself? Better use your tongue while you have it. He still has his tongue, hasn't he, Tristan? Uh, yes, Your Majesty. Now, do be sensible. After being watched for days, you were seen picking this up. You plucked it from the ground and hurried away with it. You were followed first by one, then a second, then a third. You took to your heels, but they brought you down. Now, you'd better speak while you can speak. Where were you taking it to? Where, I say, where? Where? Uh, right, Lord. For cold tavern. Mercy. Mercy. And for whom was it intended? Oh. Eh? Well, well, well. Very interesting, if true. Uh, where is this, uh, this Furcombe Tavern? The Furcombe Tavern, sire? Why, it's in the Court of Miracles. A hell spot. Frequented by wantons, cutthroats, beggars, thieves, the scum of Paris. Very interesting. Give him some water. Uh, only a little. Come along. Sorry, masters, I'm more here now than I can serve. Try some other tavern. 
Oh, uh, yes, of co course. Uh, right this way, gentlemen, if you please. Come on, show me that again. Be seated, gentlemen. Now, what is your pleasure, my masters? A demi flagon of burgundy. Let me have it. Out of sight, you know, skull. You want to have us all hang? Give me the note and break that shaft of the kindling. Demi flagon of burgundy. At once, my masters. At once. Hmm. There's one for the gibbet. Here, Tristan. Who is the other one, sire? The traitor. Patience. I hesitate to even mention his name until I'm quite certain. But the man confessed it to me. Ah, but under what persuasion? Under similar conditions, I'd have confessed to the burning of Rome. Even to playing the fiddle. <laughs> what, hello, gentlemen? <laughs> Get off my lap. Not till you buy me a drink, Birdiekins. Will you kindly remove yourself? No, no, pussy kid. Uh, why don't you ignore her? The wine, gentlemen. Oh, yes, and bring two big spice steaks. Here, here, here. And some red cheese. Uh, no, no. Your change, master. Why, we can stay drunk for a month on this. No, you must keep that. Oh, no, you don't. My generous lover. Come on. Take this food and wine out here. Do you want to ruin my trade? Why, not at all, my good judges. You supply the tanker. <laughs> Why, you get. I'm sorry to see you in such bad company. And you, Colette, with, <laughs> with Father Time himself. <laughs> oh, Father Time, lay not thy frost upon this budding flower. On bitter seas of passion tossed, forgive its tiny hour. <laughs> And thou will get. Waste not thy heart upon this juiceless mold. Ere all thy fragrant youth depart, and leave thee useless old. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Who is this cockroach? Why, that's Francois Villon, the poet. Ha! A tinker of verses, gentlemen. No offense. Poetry is its own worst enemy. Come, join me in a bottle of wine, fit for a king. Here's the King Louis. May the hide rot in his carcass, and may the Burgundians take the city away from him. <laughs> oh, better still, may they take him away from the city. <laughs> For he who does nothing gets nothing, and he who dares nothing deserves nothing. Ticking nothing. <laughs> You drink more than is good for you, my friend. What can a man do but drink when France is going to the devil and an income poop sits on the throne? I suppose you could do better if you were king. I don't wish to appear boastful, Brother Longnose, but I should think a child of two could do better. Really? Really? <laughs> Had I been born in a brocaded bed, I might have led armies and served France. As it is, you see me here consorting with cutthroats and wantons. I'm wasting my time on a dull old buzzard like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, if it's so easy to be king, uh, how would you begin? First, I'd eat. Oh, not common food like this, of course. Something more suited to my station. Having fortified myself on hummingbirds and goldfish, my next step would be to clean house. The vermin who infest the palace I'd hang in clusters. Oh. Ah, uh, but you would make exceptions, surely. Uh, that um, uh, kindly old hermit, uh, uh, isn't his name uh, 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 Tristan? What, that old murderer? I'd hang him first and suspend the others from his toe. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, uh, uh, leaving Tristan swinging in the breeze, uh, uh, what would you do next? Oh, try to know my subjects. I'll try and earn their devotion and loyalty instead of their loathing. Hmm. 
By abolishing taxes, I suppose. No. By abolishing despair and substituting hope. By knowing the longings in their hearts. As a man of the people would. Seeing them as they are and admitting that their vices are as deep-rooted as their virtues. I treat them as my children. Instead of as my enemies. So, by knowing the worst in them, I bring out the best in them. You should have been an orator, my friend. I am an orator. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, my subjects. And now, where's that boss? <laughs> 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 Ah, my little dove, which do you prefer, the brains or the snoot? Francois, what would you do for me if, if you were king? For you, beneath your feet what treasures I would fling. The stars should be your pearls upon a string. The world... The world ruby for your finger ring. And you should have the sun and moon to wear if I were king. Would you do that? Hmm? Why don't you write that anyway? I never heard it. Oh, I don't remember. You lie like seven hounds to hell, you snake. You wrote it for some other winch. I swear on my hereditary honor. You haven't any hereditary honor. Oh, me, the Stygian flames burn my tongue to a crisp and scatter the ashes in the sticks. You don't have to get poetic. You're a dirty liar, and I can tell it by the look in your eye. You're a two-faced, double-dying, screaming abuse, and I only wish I could think of something to... Here, clown, for your rhyme. Thank you, my lady. That's more than I usually get. I suppose you're going to keep it, you dog. Francois! Francois, you must leave. Hurry, they came back. Who? The watch? Yes, the guard at the storehouse betrayed you. They tortured him. I told you you'd hang us all. The minute they left, I headed along here on the chance of finding you and warning you. And they followed you. We've done nothing wrong here, my lord constable. We obey the laws. We pay his majesty's taxes. See, it's all receipted, my lord. Uh, you have but to glance at it. Don't you think it rather odd that my grand constable should come here himself? You mean that he... I'll take this with me and examine it later. Yes. You have a rogue here named Fillon? There he is, my lord. Francois, don't let them take you. Quick, quick. Down with the king! Pretty night's work, Master Villon. Duval, Lafarge. So it was you, my dear, to see me. <laughs> Take him out and hang him. No! Just one moment, young man. Who are you to interfere with the king's justice? I am the king's justice. Your majesty. Long live the king! Greetings to you, my loyal subjects. <laughs> and especially to you, master philosopher. Leo Francois, 
the king. I'm afraid it's a little late for etiquette. Quite so. Captain, arrest the leaders and take them to the palace dungeon. Your Majesty. There was something wrong the minute I sat in his lap. I suspected him. Well, if you suspected him, why didn't you say something about it? Oh, well, it doesn't matter anymore. But why did you have to insult him? Why couldn't you keep your mouth shut? Yes, and the way you're going to hang everybody, upside down. Leave and... him alone, you. Can't you see he's writing poetry? <laughs> Fine time to be writing poetry. What time could be finer? If a man isn't inspired by his own death, he's beyond inspiration. Now, here is our epitaph. Epitaph? What's that? Oh, usually something good about somebody bad. After they're dead. Oh. Oh, brother men who after us shall live, let not your hearts be hardened to our fate. For if some pity to ourselves ye give, then shall yourselves the warmer mercy rate. You see us here, five, six, strung up in state. Once goodly flesh that throbbed with blood and wine, and now the stench where worms and maggots dine, while we the bones in mouldy ashes fall. Let no one laugh at our absurd design, but pray to God that he forgive us all. Francois Villon. Francois. Francois, don't leave me. I'm afraid I must. But I'll come back. I always come back. But this time you won't. Oh. We'll meet again sometime, somewhere. I promise. Now. Now smile. I want to remember you that way. Come on, smile. Then say something funny. Funny. Oh. Here goes Francois, child of France, to swing into his final dance. <laughs> his neck, at last, shall have the chance to weigh the tonnage of his pants. Good morning. You may leave us. I suppose you're wondering what I'm going to do with you. <laughs> Your Majesty is not the imaginative type, I can almost guess. Don't you think that's rather a dangerous tone to use under the circumstances? And what danger is there? Beyond hanging. What indeed? <laughs> Compared with some of the choicer forms of amusement, hanging becomes a pleasure. Hmm? I could have you boiled in oil, or sliced, or drawn and quartered. And there are other tortures that for the moment escape me. Yeah, I, I, I beg Your Majesty's pardon. You should. Especially as I am not going to hang you yet, Your Majesty. No, 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 no. Don't get emotional. I am nothing if not a just man. Last night you did me a slight favor by ridding me of my chief traitor. Oh, quite unintentionally, my friend. Nevertheless, you shall have your reward. Your Majesty will never know my gratitude. No, I probably won't. On the other hand, you did insult me publicly. You did make revolutionary speeches, naming yourself as my successor. And you did rob my private storehouse and eat the loot right under my nose. I, I didn't know it was Your Majesty's nose. But you knew it was my storehouse. And you did top off the evening by assassinating my Grand Constable in cold blood. Yes. Yes, this places us on the horns of a dilemma. Your Majesty admitted he was a traitor. Even so, he was still my Grand Constable, so don't split hairs. But he started the fight. And you finished it leaving me to punish you and reward you for the same deed. 
Something which would have puzzled King Solomon himself. Of course, you might hang me at one end and pin a medal on the other. Hmm? A greater king would hang you out of hand. A lesser king would forgive you. I probably fall somewhere between the two. And this is my decision. Since you have deprived me of the services of my Grand Constable, don't, don't interrupt me. And since you think it is so easy to rule these carrion who call themselves my subjects, I hereby appoint you Grand Constable of France and Brittany. Grand Constable. Defender of my crown, commander-in-chief of my armies, and dispenser of justice. High, middle, and low. Is this a jest? Not at all. Heretofore, I have selected my Grand Constables from the noble families of France. And they've all proved themselves either traitors or cowards. This time, I'm appointing one from the people. Oh, it's true you come from the gutter, my friend. But you have a certain native sense of loyalty, courage, and common knowledge. <laughs> At least, it'll prove an interesting experiment. Uh, oh, yes, and of course, you'll need a title to go with it. Get on your knees. Uh, oh, well, yes. I suppose this will have to do. Get down, get down. Go on, go on. Francois, I dub thee Count to Montcorbier, hereditary knight of the Golden Buckle. Yes, and now I think you need a bath. Uh, show the Count to Montcorbier to his rooms. This way, my lord. <laughs> Your Majesty. Uh, my Lord Grand Constable. My Lord Tristan, what is all this I hear? To see me murdered. Yes, Your Majesty. Oh, how horrible. Yes, Your Majesty, but what does it matter since he was proven a traitor? Nevertheless, a very high-born traitor. I cannot understand His Majesty taking such terrible risks to bring about his downfall, when you could so easily have disposed of him with a cup of poison wine. I quite agree, Your Majesty. Uh, and the scoundrel that murdered him. Who was he? A cutthroat of the first water, Your Majesty. A flea-bitten poet named François Villon. François Villon? What is it, my child? He's the one I told you about, Your Majesty. The one who accosted me at the church. Oh, the scoundrel. Hanging's too good for him. I should inform Oh, I beg of Your Majesty not to. The poor fellow's in enough trouble as it is. <clears throat> if Your Majesty will permit. The purpose of my visit is to inform you that His Majesty requests the immediate attendance of the court in the throne room to meet with the new Grand Constable. New Grand Constable? Who is he? The Count of Montcorbier, Your Majesty. If I may say so, Your Excellency is greatly improved. Thank you, Oliver. I'm glad you think so. I feel as slippery as a worm. No. <laughs> and your court is Your Excellency. I trust Your Excellency approves of them? My Excellency approves. Very nice. Very nice. I suppose I have larger rooms for more formal occasions. Why, of course, Your Excellency. You have your state chambers, your private trial room, your personal torture chamber, and your... Uh, that, that, that's enough. Now, what do I do? Do, Your Excellency? You govern. You govern France. Oh, yes, of course, I, I govern. <clears throat> uh, do you spell de Montcorbier with a small or a capital D? Small. Small. Mid law. Now, we'd better start at the beginning. We are still besieged by the Burgundians, I believe. At last reports we were, Your Excellency. Uh-huh, well, that takes care of that. Now, uh, uh, the food situation. Oh, we have enough for six months. Uh-huh, well, that seems to take care... Who has enough for six months? Why, the palace and the army, my lord. And what about the people? The people? 
Oh, oh, oh you mean the, the people. Yes, th that's who I mean. <laughs> the people are hardly a military factor, my lord. No, of course not. Now, tell me, my friend, how does a Grand Constable fill up his day? Well, first he inspects the guard, reports to his majesty, attends levies, and tries all prisoners, both civil and military. Prisoners. Have we any prisoners today? Only those arrested last night at the Furcone Tavern, Your Excellency. What? Are they still here? Of course. I'm expected to try them? Of course. Ah, when? Oh, at your convenience. There's no hurry. No hurry? If you'd been shut up in a slimy dungeon, fearful, hopeless, thinking each moment were your last, you'd know whether there was any hurry or not. I, uh, I, I meant no offense, Your Excellency. No, of course not, you. The worst offense is surely ignorance. Come, let's try the prisoners immediately. Uh, yes, my lord. This way, my lord. Uh, this way, my lord. His Majesty's compliments. And will you attend him in the throne room to meet the court? My compliments to His Majesty. But I have some prisoners to try immediately. But, my lord, I hardly think His Majesty will enjoy being kept waiting. <laughs> Neither would the prisoners. Come on, Oliver. Uh, but, my lord... Yes, yes, he, um, he comes from Nazi. But if this de Montcorbier comes from Nancy, Your Majesty, uh, how did he get through the Burgundian line? It, well, there's a, a, such a thing as a flag of truce, my dear. A flag of truce? Oh, but of course. <laughs> <laughs> My lords and ladies, the court will remain assembled. Come along. Lord. Your Excellency, the prisoners before you are charged with violating the curfew, assault and battery, suspicion of conspiracy, Suspicion of having participated in the robbery of the king's storehouse, receiving stolen goods, and showing armed resistance to arrest. Hmm. Give me their names. Robin Turgis. Uh, yes, Your Majesty. I didn't have anything to do with it, Your Dignity. All I did was receive a paper from one man and give it to another man. And I had the slightest idea it had anything to do with the enemy, so help me. <clears throat> and yet you received a hundred gold pieces for each transaction, I believe? That's a lie, Your Dignity. All I got was ten. If anybody got a hundred pieces, it wasn't me. All I got was ten. I only did it five times. I got fifty pieces here to prove it. Because I wouldn't touch the filthy money. Robin Turgis, you are a thief, a receiver of stolen goods, a conspirator, and worst of all, you water your wine. But, my lord... Silence! If I had it within my power, I'd have you hanged and strangled, roasted over a slow fire, and boiled in your own diluted wine. However, his sovereign majesty, Louis XI, defender of the face and champion of the people has decided on a new policy of extreme mercy. So, I am reluctantly constrained to fine you, oh, 50 gold pieces, which you will pay to the captain of the watch. D -d Does that mean that I am free? It means you are entirely free. Now, get out! Free? Oh! Oh! Long live the king! Long live the king! Long live the king! Long live the king! Next, we...
We have René de Montigny, Guy Tabary, Colin de Cailleux, Cazin Cholet, Jean Leloup. <laughs> as fine a bunch of rascals as I've ever seen. Are you guilty or not guilty? There must be some mistake, my lord. Not guilty, Your Honor. I was home in bed. I'm only a poor locksmith, Your Honor. And I studied for the claws, Your Honor. Silence! René de Montigny. You were seen leaving the king's storehouse in company with the gentleman on your left and that arch rogue, Francois Villon. That's a lie, Your Honor. Villon was with me all the time the storehouse was being robbed. Oh, and how did you know the storehouse was being robbed? You just said so. Didn't he say so? Oh, I don't know anything about it. I was home in bed. Ladies, ladies, you must not disrupt the dignity of this court. Highland! Now, René de Montigny, did you rob the king's storehouse or didn't you? Storehouse? Why, well, I didn't even know he had a storehouse. Neither did I. I'm just a poor but honest locksmith. And I was home in bed. So was I. We were all in bed. It is becoming more and more evident that a grave injustice has been committed. Since you were all home in bed, you can't possibly have robbed His Majesty's storehouse. Probably this Vion did it all by himself. That's a lie. He was with me, I tell you. I won't ask you where. Now, if you will let me finish what I was saying. Since it is apparent you are all innocent, and have in consequence suffered false imprisonment, I am unfortunately obliged to award you damages. Much as it pains me, I decree that you shall each receive seven gold pieces. The captain of the watch has in his charge 50 gold pieces. Seven times seven being uh, 49, there will be one piece left over, which you will give to the poor captain. Uh, without fail, Your Excellency. Long live the king! Long live the king! Long live the king! Long live the king! Silence! I echo your sentiments regarding the life of the king, but do not be deceived. His majesty is not hoodwinked. If he forgives you in this instance, it is because he knows also that you were hungry, and he hopes that his kindness toward you will breed a little decency in your own heart which I doubt. Now, get out! Now I'll leave this chest! Could I ask a question, my lord? No, you may not. Oh, just one moment, Captain. You may go. Uh, lord. Oh. What is it, my child? Could you tell me if Vion is safe? At the present time, yes. Thank heaven and God bless His Majesty. <laughs> Amen to that. Why are you so interested in this rascal? Because I love him. Oh, he's a dog if there ever was one, but... But I love him. He doesn't deserve it. Oh, I know that. Your name is Zuget, isn't it? Yes, Your Honor. Vion spoke to me about you. He said you might ask about him, and if you did, to tell you he doesn't deserve your affection. And to give you this ring. Isn't he wonderful? Thank you, my lord. I wonder who he stole it from. Will they free him, too? Oh, probably. Thank you, my lord, for all your kindness. Good morning, my lord. Oh, Tristan, uh, how do you like my new magnanimity? I think Your Majesty will live to regret the whole joke. Well, the trouble with you, Tristan, is that you've no sense of humor. You're looking at a new Louis, Tristan. You have just seen my new method of dealing with habitual criminals. We don't hang them. We cover them with gold. 
And now, my dear Lord Constable, would you deign to meet my queen and my court before they collapse from utter exhaustion? Your Majesty. Uh, my Lord uh, Grand Constable. His Majesty the King. My dear, um, this is the Count de Montcorbier. My lord. I can't see him very well. What does he look like? My lord. <clears throat> My lord de Stuteville, the Provost Marshal of Paris. My lord. The Seigneur de Grigny. My lord. And uh, uh, the Count de Fleur. My lord. <clears throat> uh, General Barbizier, General Doudon, General Salier. Uh, the Count de Montcorbier. I was saying, Your Majesty, I'm not familiar with the name of de Montcorbier, though heraldry is my dearest hobby. Well, I can't say the same for the name of Dudon, General. Ever since you won the Battle of Morlery, I have watched your success with increasing enthusiasm. But uh, I... I did not win the Battle of, of Morlery. Oh, yes, yes, of course, yes, you lost it, yes. But there was the Siege of Liège. Uh, uh, we, we lost that one too, my dear Count. Who oh, did we? I'm so sorry. <laughs> come along, come along. We must talk about your battle some other time, General. Uh, Duchess uh, uh, de Longue, uh, Vicomte de Gratillard, Seneschal of Paris, the Count de Mont... Uh, you must think this rude of me, but uh, my name is... Uh, uh, de Montcorbier. Silly, isn't it? I looked at you, and I nearly forgot my name. No doubt your lordship has many important things on his mind. No, 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 no. I have nothing on my mind at all. You just affect me that way. I had no idea that you... that, that I... W Do you live here? I am one of Her Majesty's ladies-in-waiting. Oh, what a fortunate queen. Do you know, the moment I set eyes on you, I said to myself, there is all the beauty in the universe. Past, present, and future personified and embodied in this exquisite creature. My lord, what is it? What is what, my lord? The name of all this loveliness. My lord! My name is Catherine de Vaucelles. What a beautiful name. Your Majesty, a herald from the Duke of Burgundy has entered the city under flag of truce. He demands audience. Hmm. Admit the herald of Burgundy. Your, your Majesty, if the terms of surrender are at all reasonable, I, I should be very tempted to accept them. Would you? The army is extremely unsettled, Your Majesty. Desertions every day, Your Majesty. Thank you. I shall remember what you have said. You have something to say, Sir Herald? I have, Your Majesty. Then say it, my friend. In the name of the Duke of Burgundy and his allies, assembled in overwhelming forces outside the walls of Paris, I hereby summon you, Louis of France, to surrender this city unconditionally and to throw yourself in confidence upon my master's mercy. And if I refuse, Sir Herald? For the city, famine till the end, then fire and the sword. For yourself, no hope of pardon. And if I surrender the city? For yourself and your court, an honorable retreat to the Duchy of Epine. <laughs> you mean a dishonorable retreat, huh? Who are you? The Count de Montcorbier, Knight of the Golden Buckle, Grand Constable of France, Chief of the Armies, Dispenser of all justice, high, middle, and low. No, 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 don't bother to look around. I, <laughs> I am replacing the traitor who was in your master's employ. Uh, uh, uh. 
And don't make any more movements like that. Or I'll have you hanged and sent back to your master in a bag. You have bad manners, my friend, and you rate yourself too highly. You're not the envoy of a conquering hero, but the servant of a group of shabby little vassals, rebellious serfs of a noble lord. Now, go back and tell them this. Kings are great in the eyes of their people, but the people are great in the eyes of God. And it is the people of France who are speaking to you now. We are well armed and provisioned. We are warm and comfortable behind our strong walls. We laugh at your threats. But if we who eat were starved, if we who drink were dry, if we who are warm were frozen, our answer would still be the same. Ah, we laugh at you. We, the people, and the king. And this is your answer? No! No, not all. We give you one week to disband and get out. If at the end of the week you are still cluttering up the outskirts of our city, we will attack and destroy you to the last man. Now, we don't wish to be annoyed further. But, but your majesty... You heard my Lord Grand Constable? Get out. Yes. yes. There's nothing else you can do. Get out. What do you think, my lord? Will the Burgundians retreat, or, or will they stay and be slaughtered? I'm afraid they'll stay and be slaughtered. Will you attack at dawn or during the night? Which would you prefer? Well, I should think... Oh, you're making fun of me. Oh, my lady, I'm smiling because my heart is singing, and because I love your faith in the French. We will attack at dawn or dusk or noon or midnight, and we will win. How well you talk. I only hope I can fight half as well. But you may be killed. Not if I can help it. Yes. What a glorious day. To die for France. Yes, it's better than some I can think of. But death in any form should be avoided, if possible. Will you wear my kerchief into battle? Aren't you afraid it may take my mind off the fighting? My lord. My lord, the generals are assembled in the council chamber. Oh, I'll attend at once. Very well, my lord. Generals? Council chamber? I've called a council of war. Council of war? Then we shall know very soon when you will attack. Very soon. Will you bring me word? Of course. But where shall I find you? I'll wait here. Here? Uh, it, it might take long. I wouldn't mind. You might catch cold. Do you think so? I wish you some little corner you can call your own. Out of the draft. Well, you might find me behind the fourth door on the left, on the third floor of the new east wing. If you can remember it. It's engraved on my brain in letters of fire. insult, Your Majesty, that I should be asked to discuss this matter with such a man. I quite agree with General Tudor. The whole thing's a waste of time, Your Majesty. He knows nothing whatever of the situation. He sounds a good... Your Majesty. My Lords. Uh, <clears throat> we were just discussing your plans to attack the Burgundians. <laughs> It's a very interesting opinion, General, but it leaves me in the dark. <clears throat> I think the General meant to convey that... That it's ridiculous, absurd. You would permit... Even if I commanded my soldiers to attack, they, they wouldn't would fight. You see... The foundation you... of strategy is to surround. You can't fight from the inside out. Why, even Caesar. Uh, may, we... may I suggest, then let us surround them. And how can we surround them? How can an egg surround its shell? Ah, that brings up a very interesting... It's preposterous. 
But why can't we break through their line? Because they won't leave them for us to break through. They'll retreat and pin us against the walls of Paris. It's quite apparent, General, you have an answer for everything. It's quite apparent that you have no knowledge of military maneuvers. You're right, General. I've only studied yours and I've learned nothing from them. Sure. My only wonder is that you chose the sword when you care so little for fighting. If you'd care for a sample of my fighting... <laughs> Aren't you afraid, General, I might surround you? Gentlemen, gentlemen, this is not helping us with the Burgundians. <laughs> My Lord Constable, uh, what are your orders? That we attack within the week. And what do you say to that, General? Even if I commanded such a thing, my soldiers would rebel, because it is ridiculous, asinine, imbecilic, and insane. There is your answer, my Lord Constable. I order you to attack within the week. And I refuse. Your Majesty, have I your permission to rejoin my command? Eh? 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 Yes, my General. Thank you, Anna. You may go to bed. Will there be anything else, my lady? No, thank you, Anna. Good night. Good night, my lady. In that way, I'm sure we would succeed. But, my dear Count, without the support of General Dudon, who seemed quite adamant to your plan, it would be useless for us to attempt what you suggest. But, my dear General, if I... Uh, I, uh, uh, what are you talking about, eh? Your Majesty. Your Majesty, and have we your permission to rejoin our commands? Uh, uh, you may, Generals. Oh, my Lord. It's not quite as easy as you thought, is it? Your Majesty, if you will give me a little time... Ah, I... yes. But you haven't much time, have you, my dear Count? I don't quite understand, Your Majesty. Didn't I tell you? No, I suppose I didn't. Uh, well, now, let me see. Uh, you freed eight prisoners from the Fur Cone Tavern and gave each of them a small present, eh? Yes, Your Majesty. Uh, what did you do about the ninth prisoner? But there were only eight. Only eight? Now, I could have sworn that there were nine. Uh, Tristan, uh, how many prisoners were taken from the Furcombe Tavern? Nine, Your Majesty. Nine, yes, but that would include... That's right, Villon. Francois Villon. <laughs> that rogue is always raising his ugly head, isn't he? I still don't understand, Your Majesty. And yet I believe I'm speaking perfectly plainly, my dear Count. I am asking you what sentence you are passing on a ruffian who resisted arrest and murdered one of my officers while doing so. What would you suggest? Boiling him in oil or breaking him on the wheel? <laughs> Nothing so melodramatic, my dear Count. As I said before, this Villon rendered us a slight service which we are repaying with a week of exalted splendor. A week? A week, exactly. And at the end of that week, I shall expect you to build me an extra fine gibbet and from it... Hang, Master Vion. Yes. You know, for a few hours, Your Majesty had me almost disappointed in him. I'm glad that your faith in me was sustained, my dear Vion. Good night. Good night. Oh, yes. Your Majesty. Oh, yes. My Lord Grand Constable. Majesty, what if he escapes? <laughs> he won't escape. I've taken care of that. <laughs> Did you see his face? <laughs>
Were you intending to leave the palace? I was thinking of taking the air before retiring. Oh, but His Majesty doesn't want anyone to leave the palace at night, only with an armed escort. Yes, yes, of course. Now, that's a wise precaution. In that case, I'll take the air on the battlements. Good night. Good night. <laughs> You'd forgotten. Shh. How could I? What is it, my lord? Uh, I was just making sure the palace was well guarded. It is. Now you must forget your duties. Come. I'm not hungry, thank you. You're not comfortable. Let me I... put a cushion behind you. Now, when do we attack? Uh, we don't. We don't? It seems you can't fight from the inside out or the outside in or anywhere, in fact, if you're afraid of the enemy. The generals were very firm about that. The scurvy cowards. Why didn't you throw them out of their commands? Hmm. Too many of them. More than I could replace to attack in a week. Well, then attack in two weeks. His Majesty only gave me one. Well, how can he expect you to do in a week what the others haven't done in a year? Because I said I could. I said it was easy. His Majesty is proving to me that it isn't. Oh. It's a pity. Because I think now I'd be quite willing to give my life to save the city. And to make you proud of me. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I had visions of the city free again. Food coming through the gates. And, and travelers from far off places. Hunts in the forest of Fontainebleau. And, and I wanted you to take me on a picnic in the spring. I might not have been able to anyway. Why not? Oh, the spring is some time off and... And time does strange things to people, doesn't it? I wonder. I wonder in what misty isle the voice of Sappho thrills the air. In what green valley of the Nile does Cleopatra still despair for Antony, the debonair? The wind has blown them all away. The good, the bad, the foul, the fair. Where are the snows of yesterday? Who wrote that? Oh, a person of no importance. Who is to be hanged? What a pity. Ah, you shouldn't feel too sorry for him. Such wretches are born and live in the shadow of the gibbet. They're starved and tortured. The slightest wrong they commit is punishable by hanging. So, when at last they do hang, well, they've always expected it. Aren't we lucky we're not in their shoes? Yes, it is nice, isn't it? Poor, starving people. They'd fight soon enough if they didn't have so much food to stuff themselves with. Who? The generals, the army. Big, fat pigs. 
That's it. Of course, that's it. What? Of course they'd fight. When their stomachs are flapping against their backs, they'll fight soon enough. Why should they fight with six months' food in the storehouses? The bloated bourgeois. But when that's taken away from them... Oh, oh, oh what a brain! You gorgeous, heaven-sent dream of loveliness. Just think, tomorrow will be a happy day for the hungry and a busy day for the storehouses. You mean you're going to... I mean I'm going to open every storehouse and give away all the food. Wonderful. And now, and now I must leave you before I ruin your reputation completely. Well, my reputation hasn't seemed to bother you up till now. Since knowing you better, I respect you even more. Dare I kiss your hand? Because you've already kissed me on the lips. I think you're becoming a little fond. Did I really? Mm -hmm. I thought I was dreaming. Sometimes. Catherine. Yes. I... He never knew that he was being followed. He hadn't the slightest suspicion of it. <laughs> Did you order the gibbet? Oh, bright and early, Your Majesty. Of the stoutest oak and masterfully joined. Well, be careful he doesn't hang you on it before you get a chance to hang him. Your Majesty! Your Majesty! What is it? What is it? He's gone. Who's gone? The Grand Constable. What? Well, why didn't the palace guard stop him? Your Majesty, he took the guard with him. He took the... Tristan, my clothes! <laughs> In the king's name, being duly apprised of some shortage of food in certain sections of our city, I hereby command the keepers of my storehouses to relieve the condition by the immediate distribution of whatever stores are necessary for the relief and comfort of my beloved people. Oh. Signed, signed, King Louis XI, Defender of the Faith. Oh. my breakfast at last. Where are my eggs? There aren't any eggs, Your Majesty. What do you mean? His Majesty has given them all away. What do you mean, he's given them all away? To the people, Your Majesty. That's what the steward said when he came back from the storehouse. He tried every one, but it was always the same thing. His Majesty has given everything away. But this is ridiculous. Not His Majesty. I can't believe it. Catherine, go immediately to His Majesty and inform him what has happened. And tell him I must have eggs for my breakfast. And I don't care where he gets them. Yes, Your Majesty. Fish. From the moat, I suppose. I tell you, Your Majesty, there's no hope of victory. You're very comforting, my friends. Well, what is it? What is it? Lady Catherine, with an important message from Her Majesty. I'm sorry to disturb Your Majesty, but Her Majesty wishes me to inform you that she would like some eggs for her breakfast. Well, wouldn't the kitchen be a good place to try? Oh, well, she did, Your Majesty, and there weren't any. Really, Catherine, I don't want to appear rude or criticize your mistress, but I, 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 I'm very busy this morning. 
I don't know anything about eggs or where they keep them. But I believe usually in storehouses. Well, the steward reports he went to all the storehouses and there weren't any eggs. That's ridiculous. I have hundreds of eggs. Now, be a good girl. Run along and take your troubles to someone else. I'm supposed to be the king, not the chef. Yes, Your Majesty. Eggs. Eggs. <laughs> out there. I trust your majesty's sense of humor is functioning well this morning. What are you talking about? Your grand constable has opened the storehouses and given away all the food to the populace. All? To the last bean. I trust your majesty is well amused. How much food have we here in the palace? How much food have we here in the palace? It is sufficient for perhaps five days, your majesty. Five days? To be careful, my lord. His majesty knows. Of course he knows. That's what we intended. Now, forgive me for a few moments. I tried to warn your majesty. Five days. Now, you see, I... I... Oh. Good morning. Uh, am I intruding? If so, I can easily pay my respects later. Oh, no. I believe we were just discussing you. Well, how nice. Your majesty will be delighted to hear that your goodwill mission is a complete success. My goodwill mission? I presume you're referring to the giving away of all my food. Exactly. It would have warmed Your Majesty's heart if you had seen how gratefully it was received. No doubt. No doubt. But permit me to ask you one simple question. What do you propose to do when all Paris is starving? But Your Majesty, France is full of food. The country outside is groaning with grain. Mountains of flour, mildew in the mills. The pigs beseech you to accept their fattest hams. All we have to do is to go and get them. And to do so, I suppose you suggest we fly over the Burgundian lines. Oh, no, not at all, Your Majesty. We can fight through them. Don't you think so, generals? <laughs> Your Majesty's ears must have burned. Never have I heard such lovely things said about a living monarch. Everywhere, it was God bless our gracious Louis. And long live the king! Long live the king! Something about all this I don't quite understand. What's hard to understand? The people's got no food, so the king gives it to them. I say, long live the king! Yeah! Why does Louis worry about us? He never did it before. There's only one thing to it. They're fattening us for the kill. They're expecting an attack from the Burgundians, and they're trying to buy our help. Well, why shouldn't we help? This is our city, and Louis is our king. What did he ever do for you? Oh, he sent us all his food. That's it. You see, it's a trick. Trying to buy your loyalty through your stomachs. Well, when the Burgundians are fighting the Parisians and the Parisians are fighting the Burgundians, I know what I'll be doing. Yes, you'll be hiding in a cellar. Ah. My child. Good evening, Father. Weren't you with Francois Villon when he was arrested? I was, Father. I heard that you and the others had been released. But what about Francois? He wasn't with us. Then the worst has happened. Oh, no, Father. The Grand Constable himself told me he was all right. I wish I could believe that. Oh, but you can. The new Grand Constable is a very kindly man. He must be. Without him, all these people would still be without food. Yes, and look at him. Gorging themselves today and starving again tomorrow. <laughs>
Well, it's happened. Tonight, His Majesty had his last meal. Now they'll have to fight. What do you mean? Our glorious army has determined not to fight. Neither cold nor starvation, insults or abuse, will swerve them from that noble impulse. Then we failed. And my week ends tonight. Is that why you've avoided me all week? No. No, I, I was busy with the walls, trying to... Catherine, have you ever asked yourself where the Count de Montcordier came from? Did it ever occur to you that perhaps he came from the Court of Miracles? Oh, my Lord, for a minute you had me thinking you were serious. Catherine, I am Francois Villon. Francois Villon? Gutter poet, companion of the finest company of cutthroats, rogues, Thieves and murderers that France can boast of. But why did you do this to me? I never intended to. It started as the jest of a king. And then... I loved you. Love? With all the meaning that the word can have in paradise. Love? I could not give you any godlier thing if I were king. Go. Please go. Please. Our commands are completely demoralized, Your Majesty. Not a man will obey his officer. They refuse to man the wall. I'd have them hanged. But who's to hang them, Your Majesty? They will not man the walls until they're fed. In the meantime, the West Gate is unprotected. But we haven't any food to give them. Your Majesty might pacify them with some sort of entertainment, such as perhaps immediately hanging the noble lord who gave away their food. An excellent idea, my lord. What is it, Father? I must see His Majesty. Oh, the Grand Constable. I'm sorry, Father, but that's impossible. I tell you, I must. I have urgent news. Uh, wait. What is it, Father? My Lord, it is very urgent that I see His Majesty. All the... Francois. Francois. Oh. But Francois... One moment, Father. You may go. Now, what is it, Father? Francois, what does this mean? You here, dressed like a... No, I'll explain that later. Now, what is your urgent message? I can tell that only to the King or the Grand Constable. I'm the Grand Constable. Francois, this is no time for jesting. De Montini has assembled his cockle shells at the Court of Miracles. Hundreds, thousands of them. They know the Burgundians will attack soon. And then they plan to sack and loot the city. But Francois... If you were there, you could stop them. They'd listen to you. They always have. My lord. What is it? The Burgundians have attacked. They've already broken through the West Gate. Then it's too late. Too late. No, father, it's not too late. You say my friends will listen to me. Then perhaps they'll follow me. Lord Grand Constable. You failed, haven't you? And failed miserably. Arrest him. Arrest him. Arrest him. He got away, Your Majesty. Ah, so he got away, did he? Very well, then. Issue a command. Anyone seeing that man, arrest him. If he resists arrest, cut him down. To your post, generals. Do your best, and God save France. We've been fools long enough. So while they're doing the fighting, we'll sack and loot the city. We'll never get a chance like this again. Yeah! Hey, that's only part of it. 
I want you to remember this. If the Burgundians take the city, we were helping them. On the other hand, if the city should win, we were helping the city. <laughs> we were on our way to the walls when we thought we saw some Burgundians in a house. We took after them, and during the fighting, the thieving Burgundians took the silver. <laughs> That's all very fine, but I'd like to know this. Who's going to lead us? Why, I am, of course. You? <laughs> Why, for two whites, I'd... <laughs> Why, for two whites, you'd murder your own mother. <laughs> your oratory is improving, my dear René. Don't you think so, you get? Feel. 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 Yes, Francois Villon. Come to tell you a few things my friend de Montigny has forgotten to tell you. Now... We all know there is no honor among thieves, so I'm not going to talk to you about honor. And I'm not appealing to any patch of decency I know you never had. Now, as you stand there, the city is falling. Falling to thieves like ourselves. Cutthroats, who have come all the way from Burgundy to take what belongs to us. Beggars to beg the bread from our beggars' mouths. Cut purses to cut our purses. And max to mash our women. Are we going to let these poachers move in on our preserve? These country louts show us how it's done. No. Are they going to starve us to death? No. Then I tell you this. There is no city that can be conquered unless it wants to be. And whether they like it or not, we are part of the city. Yeah. The part that knows how to fight. Or don't we? Why, of course we do. Good, then let's fight. I say, let us fight! Come on, to the West Gate! Master Noel. Yes, sir? Take some men and arrest that traitor. Traitor? You heard his majesty's orders. 
carry them out. Come, gentlemen. My orders are to arrest you, my lord. Arrest? Why this man? I'm has... sorry, father. His Majesty's orders. inform your majesty that our arms have been victorious on every side. The Duke of Burgundy and his armies are in full retreat. Well, well, well. You have done wonders, General. Oh, not entirely alone, your majesty. I have received able support from General Salier and General Barbizier. Your majesty's orders have been carried out to the last word, even to the running down of the arrest of your traitorous Grand Constable, whose fate is now in your majesty's hands. Excellent. The Count de Montcorbier. Having proved himself a coward and a traitor, is hereby sentenced to be hanged this day. Your Majesty. Your Majesty, a great injustice is being done. Last night we were facing defeat when the city was saved by Francois Villon. Oh, yes, Francois Villon. The man you know is the Count de Montcorbier. The one Your Majesty has just sentenced to death. But Your Majesty. Very interesting. Continue. Uh, Your Majesty, if you will permit me, this reverend gentleman will prove to you conclusively that what the Lady Catherine has said is true. Yes. But surely Your Majesty will not listen to I me. shall hear the reverend gentleman. Proceed, Father. It is true, Your Majesty. When I told Francois that the rebel were planning to sack and loot the city. <coughs> Good morning, Master Cutthroat. Oh, don't tell me I'm to have the honor of your personal escort to the gibbet, Your Majesty. I have been given to understand that you and some other footpads had something to do with the defeating of the Burgundians last night. Is that true or is it not? Answer me, yes or no. Well, suppose I did. Well, only this, my friend. But once more, you've made everything very complicated. You have a devilish talent for seating me on the point of the sword of justice. And it's becoming uncomfortable in the extreme. I'm sorry I have no cushion to offer for Your Majesty's comfort. Now, now, please, please spare me your witticisms. It's difficult enough trying to be King of France. Uh, I found that out, Your Majesty. Huh? You know, you know, that's the first nice thing you've ever said to me. Yes, well, now, Francois Bouillon, in recognition of your heroic but murderous services to the Crown, I hereby commute your sentence of death to life imprisonment. Life imprisonment? Don't interrupt me. You shall be imprisoned within the confines of our beautiful France. To wander or dally, as you see fit, the stars shall be your roof. And your bed, the lush meadows of Normandy, or the warm sands of Brittany. Yes. Yeah, that's almost poetry, isn't it? Poetry. The most beautiful I ever heard, Your Majesty. Yes, but as you are an inveterate mischief maker, rabble rouser, and sower of dissension, I forbid you to ever show yourself again inside the walls of Paris. You can have the rest of France, but I must have peace. 
I sympathize, Your Majesty. You had to be turned over to the custody of your foster father, who will see to it that you leave Paris before dawn tomorrow. Now get out. Your Majesty. Uh, my lord, oh, get out, get out, get out. Uh, uh, one more thing. The Lady Catherine. Catherine, it may interest you to know that it was through her intercessions that your neck has been saved. Before you leave the palace, the Lady Catherine would like a word with you. No, it's better this way. Will you thank the Lady Catherine and tell her that someday I hope to make the saving of my neck worthy of her efforts? He told me to tell you that this was the end, my lady. If something can have an end that never had a beginning, that he's going on hoping to find a further understanding of the things that have now come to him. Father, when did he leave? About an hour ago, my child. What road did he take? I promised not to tell. Was it the east? No. The south? I promised not to tell. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you. There's a man walking on the road ahead. Is he the one, milady? Yes. Shall we overtake him? No, no, we mustn't overtake him till he's very tired. He's a very obstinate man. Mm -hmm. 